I had a dilemma when buying a new camera recently. Since I have a 4K monitor, I also wanted a 4K camera to make the most of it, plus I like storing videos in the best quality possible. But at the same time, current cameras under £1000 can only record 4K at 30fps. I want 60! My next plan was to get the cheapest camera possible to tide me over until they improved, but I didn't see the point in spending money on something I didn't want to use. I researched the Panasonic camcorder lineup and I'll condense hours of findings into 30 seconds for you. The cheap 100 and 200 series are kind of like phone cameras but have marginally better image quality and fantastic optical zoom. The 500 series gets improved image stabilisation, even better zoom and extra features such as Wi-Fi and something that tells you if your image is straight or not. Above that is the 700 series, which is the first decent one. It's bigger and comes with a better sensor, connections for an external microphone and other features, but strangely a worse zoom than the cheaper ones. Above that and you get to Panasonic's top-end handhelds that take footage that's about as crisp as a photo camera would. The latest top-end generation also features 4K, but only at 30fps. And above that they cost thousands of pounds, look like badass movie cameras and finally support 4K at 60fps. Above the budget models, there's this weird middle ground where you can get something good, but why spend more and stop short of the top models, which themselves are just a little bit more again. Using this logic, it wasn't long until I was back at looking at £600 4K cameras. With much self-restraint, I decided that only the 100 and 200 series were within my budget. I then looked at what was available secondhand. With laptops and cameras, I think it's worth the gamble of getting something used but with a superior spec. I ended up getting myself a Panasonic HC V520 for £200. It's a few generations older than the current lineup but has comparable image quality, which is the big thing for me. So why did I need to upgrade? Well, my old camera was a Panasonic HDC SD5. It's bigger than my new one, the flappy movie bits of it feel a lot more robust and I suspect was more high-end when it came out, but it has aged badly. The battery no longer keeps its charge, the screen no longer works and, perhaps more worryingly, it no longer saves half the footage I record on it and it only stored videos in interlaced, not progressive, making moving footage appear less detailed. And I can't see the screen to know what's going wrong. In this comparison, you can also see that it's got this annoying Matrix-esque green tinge to the screen and a narrower field of view, making it harder to film in enclosed spaces. I'm sorry for the zoom there. As I said, I can't see what I'm filming with that camera, so this accurately represents what it's like to use. That being said, my new camera's quality is noticeably inferior to my parents' top-end model. The grain is particularly present in low-light environments. But I don't care, because it's got a feature that I've sorely missed for a long time. It has a powerful optical zoom. You can have as much quality as you like, but if you can't zoom in enough to capture what you want then it's wasted. And it's surprising how often I need more zoom than most cameras can offer me. Ignore intelligent or digital zooms. They come at the expense of quality and end up reducing the footage to a load of wobbly pixels. With optical you can really capture what's important. This camera also doubles up as a telescope for me. I've identified strange structures that I've wondered about for ages. I can read far off signs and perv on bikini clad women from afar. I don't really do that last one. Or do I? No, no I don't. But maybe I should. No, no, I won't. So yeah, if you're looking for a cheap but cheerful camera, at least get one with an awesome optical zoom. It's funny that cheaper cameras tend to have more powerful zooms than the high end cameras, which I guess rely more on a good sensor to keep things crystal clear. Although phones and the like are rapidly catching up in other areas, dedicated cameras still have the edge when it comes to zoom capabilities. So in conclusion, my personal recommendation for buying a camera is that you need to look for image quality, but also a good zoom. Be sure that it's got a comparatively wide angle lens as well, or you'll struggle to get things in the shot when you're filming indoors. 50p is pretty much the standard now. Luckily, it seems as though all of these features come as standard on the more recent Panasonic cameras. And as for 4K, I don't think that I'll ever get a camera that can do it at 60fps. You lucky people in America have it easy, since it's the standard. Here in Europe we can only get 50fps, which is annoying when computer displays are 60. It doesn't mix well in YouTube videos. I have emailed both Sony and Panasonic and neither do 60fps in Europe. The only way would be to import a camera from America and to pay about £100 in import duty. My cheap camcorder purchase looks more sensible by the minute. Time zoom. Five times zoom. Ten times zoom. 
22 times zoom. 32 times zoom. 44 times zoom. 58 times zoom. <laughs>